Hey hoodies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hope Tom, and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be doing Surat versus the makeup that I already own. If you happen to be new to my channel, hi, welcome. Thanks for clicking on this video and taking a chance and checking out the vibe. My channel is really about loving my makeup collection as it currently is, while being critical of new makeup releases and being very discerning about what I invite into my makeup collection. But every now and then I do reviews. I really try to do my reviews based around like what I actually think is worth the money and like what I would buy again and how much much value I've gotten out of it while interacting with the product. So that's what we're doing today in today's video. I'll explain more of the concept later, but I would love to have you subscribe if this kind of content sounds good to you. Make sure you like this video. I'm also on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. There's absolutely no pressure to do so. Being here, liking, commenting, that's a very great way to support me and I would love to have that too. I also have merch if you're into that kind of thing and that'll be linked down below. If you happen to be new to my content, every now and then I have the opportunity to review a brand Surat has sent me all of the product that we are going to review today, but I have also purchased from Surat before. I purchased their eyeliners and I really love their dewdrop foundation. It's going to be a little bit different than I usually do, but basically what I do is I split my face down the middle and then on half of my face I use the Surat products and then on the other half of my face I will use products that I already have in my collection. However, in today's video it's a little bit weird because I'm going to be using a Surat foundation versus another Surat foundation. And that's going to be important information for me and a lot of my subscribers who are very invested in this journey. However, to save me a little bit of time in this video, I'm actually going to forego talking about the eyeshadows and doing an eye for an eye with the eyeshadows. I have talked about these eyeshadows at length and I feel like I haven't given, given some of these other products as much of the time of day. So if you really want to see what I think of these, I will link a couple videos down below where I go more in depth with these. And also you can stick around till my final Surat review where I will go over everything very thoroughly. We're not going to do any eyeshadow today. Another reason I'm giving myself this pass is there's a lot of moving happening right now. I know if you look at my background, you're like, are you really about to move? I'm not moving, but a person is moving out of my house and another person is moving into my house and I am helping both of them. So today, earlier today, I was moving furniture. I'm a little bit tired and I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm helping myself help myself. Just like a very quick, these eyeshadows are really beautiful, but the colors are not anything that you couldn't find anywhere else, which is what I do here. So as we progress through this video, the whole purpose is to show you that if you have been lusting over any of these products from Surat, you don't need to be lusting over them because there's probably something that you already have in your makeup collection that's going to perform just as well, if not better to what you want a product to do, because not everyone's into this kind of luxury kind of situation. And, and sometimes this luxury is price point isn't worth it, in my opinion. And it's it's the price point that I typically buy my makeup in. I'm really here to figure out what's good. And so as we go through, I'll like talk about textures, I'll talk about what one thing does over another. But I think something important to keep in mind is that some of these products that, from Surat I've only used the one time so far. So I, I'm still getting to know them a little bit. Everything on the other side, on my side, I've used many times. I did not get the Surat primer. I did not request that from them. I had tried the Surat primer. I got it as a sample one of the times I bought the Dewdrop foundation. I couldn't even get through the sample. The primer is $90, which I have now since spent $90 on a primer that I enjoy. But I just felt like it didn't do anything to make my makeup look better and it didn't do anything to make my skin feel really much more prepared for foundation. I'm applying the Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I'm gonna let it sit for a second. This is my second face of makeup today and I've, you know, done strenuous activity outdoors so my skin's going through it a little bit. I was wearing SPF, don't worry. I'm actually gonna start with concealers. I have the Surat Surreal Skin Concealer in the shade two it is this little thing and I believe this retails for $50 and I'm going to be comparing that to the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick and I have the shade Silk in that. I actually use this mostly as a foundation when I'm using it as a base product. I actually don't really like taking stick products up to my eye because I find that they cling to my texture a little bit more and I don't have like a lot of texture in my under eyes but I just don't like the way it looks. I always feel like it makes me look a little bit cakey and that's not like exclusive to this product. It's kind of like my experience with stick products overall. However, I have come around to being able to apply them in a way that works and it makes them look really lovely under the eye. So I like to apply these with my fingers, but I sometimes will also apply it 
right here and then blend it up into the corner of my eyes as opposed to applying it drawing the line. I don't put on a ton of concealer and I don't really spot conceal so this is the only place I really put concealer. I always do a little like just for a little bit of brightening that's what I'm really using it for. I'm blessed enough at this point in my life to not have like a lot to, to cover up and hopefully I don't have a lot to cover up in the future either. What I'm going to do is apply the Surreal Skin and I'm going to just draw a little right here. We didn't really get a good look at this in my first impression of it because I had foundation on already and so that's why I'm doing the concealer section first. I'm just gonna tap it in. However, I have used this concealer one other time since then and it actually looks really beautiful and skin-like. So far my experience with it is that it is a very beautiful concealer, but also my feelings about it are also like, I don't think there's a way in hell that you're gonna find me recommending a concealer with this much product in it to my audience at this price point, no matter how lovely it is. But it doesn't mean I can't enjoy it while I have it either. So here we are, concealer under this eye. I'm gonna take the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick. I'm gonna do the same thing. Apply a little bit right there and then take my finger and tap it into the skin. Another thing about stick products is that I typically like to use an oil base if I'm putting them all over my face, like with the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick, because sometimes I feel like it sits, if I don't do that, there's not enough slip in it also, I feel like it doesn't melt into my skin as well as if I am using an oil-based primer. Also, as we progress through this, right now, all of the, <laughs> I have a little bit of natural light hitting me from that side, and that also means that the lighting's a little bit better on this side of my face. I need to figure that out. But I just want you to know it's gonna look darker on this side and therefore it might not be doing it as many favors as what's happening on this side. I did not intentionally do that. I did not set it up that way on purpose, like I, to, to dupe anyone. I just, I'm letting you know now. I'm gonna apply a little bit more of this Surreal Skin because I feel like the coverage level is so different. And I wanna just see when it's built up. Okay, so a number of things. Let me zoom you out. The biggest difference is obviously the amount of product that you get in value is very different between these two products. There's a lot more coverage from the Merit and I think that is to do with that this is supposed to be like a combination concealer, foundation, use it however you want kind of product and that's how they've designed it. Whereas this I think is supposed to be a very skin-like concealer. I, on my skin, prefer the Surreal Skin. But my preferences when it comes to kind of many coverage products is like, I like medium at most, but this also even feels like a light medium coverage concealer. And I know that for sure that's like not everyone's gig. Not everyone's gonna like get into that and love that. It's like undetectable on my skin over here. And it provided just like the slightest hint of coverage where, well, it doesn't look like I'm like wearing a ton of makeup over here. The coverage difference is just immensely difference between the two of them. I'm getting the vibe of this concealer that like, it, I really like it, but like I will never justify this price point for buying something that's this size. Now if it was the same price and you got like a similar amount of product as you do in the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick, it'd be like I, something I could consider purchasing again because it could be like I could use it a couple of different ways. It's a beautiful concealer, it's a beautiful formula, but like I wouldn't pay the money for it. And if you were looking to try a stick concealer, I mean, I don't mind the Merit one, that's a good one to try, but I know that there are a bunch of other beautiful stick concealers on the market. So if you've been lusting after the Surreal Skin Concealer, unless that $50 doesn't bother you, that doesn't make you flinch, I can't see a world, even if I, at the end of this review, say it's like my absolute favorite concealer, I just don't think that I would be able to like confidently say that that is like worth your dollar. I don't use that much concealer, so this will probably take me quite some time to use up, If even if it was the only concealer I was using. I've had this for over a year and I still have some ways to go on it. I still have that much of the Merit Perfecting Complexion Stick. I think both of these are really great products and I, while I do prefer the finish of the Surratt, it's just like you probably love your concealer way more than you would end up loving that concealer, especially if you're already liking your concealer. If you did want to take the plunge to try it, I would say that's on you, but also it's you're not with this packaging of this product, because Surratt's product packaging runs the gamut a little bit. It's not even like you're getting a luxury experience whenever you're using this. Next up, we are gonna talk foundations. And for foundations, we are gonna put the Surreal Skin Foundation against the Dewdrop Foundation. So both of these are Surratt products. But what I really wanna do is get them on my face next to each other so we can see if there's a difference. 
if I can clock the difference and then be able to communicate that to you. I think these are both the same price. So it would be a matter of like finish and coverage that we'd be really looking at today. But the Swarati Drop Foundation is my favorite foundation. And if you are new here, I've done a very thorough in-depth review of this already. And I'm wearing it in a lot of my videos. Like it's the foundation I wear a lot. Uh, but the Surreal Skin I'm wrapping my head around a little bit. Now, both of these products I have issues with the packaging, but both of them on the skin I have found that they have been beautiful so far. I have worn this a couple more times, but I still think I'm preferring these Dewdrop Foundation. But let's just put it on my face to be sure. So I'm just going to shake this up a little bit before we start applying. I will say this, in my first impressions video, someone did say, I haven't looked into it, and, but I'm, I'm inclined to believe that this person knows what they're talking about. And I most of the time trust that my subscribers are giving me good information, but they they had mentioned that there's supposed to be a, a primer in this foundation stick as to be like a, a one and done situation because it's like it has the brush and it also has the primer in it. So it's like only all you need is this. Looks really beautiful. Looks lovely. So now I'm going to shake up the Dewdrop Foundation and I'm going to take a less densely packed brush to apply to try to get the same amount of coverage as I got. And both of these shades are in 1.5 from Surat and the foundations, if you are flip flopping from one to the other, they seem to be shade for shade. I know that sometimes brands say that and then it actually doesn't end up being the case, but my experience with these Surat foundations so far, it is the case, like you can pick one over the other. Surreal Skin, Dewdrop. Let me take a moment to get up close in my business. In a very interesting turn of events, I think that the Surreal Skin is dewier. And I also feel like that the Dew Drop is like, it's just more of like a, a natural finish. At least that's what I'm getting the vibe from them. You can see just like there's a bit more of a glow happening over here, whereas like it's not happening as much on the Dew Drop side. The Dew Drop continues to have the blur that I prefer. Not that what is happening over here doesn't look absolutely stunning, because I think it does. But I do think that my pores look better on the Dew Drop side. This is the Surreal Skin. And the dewdrop. But it also kind of answers the question like I the dewdrop foundation does make your skin like look luminous but it doesn't really let me get look wet whereas I feel like the surreal skin makes it look wet. I will say this for my khaki overlap viewers is that this has a much closer finish to the Chanel Sublimage Le Temps than this one does and so it makes sense to me that when khaki tried this one she liked it more just based on the way that it has in the finish alone for me this side is still waiting supreme but i think they're both lovely it comes down to what finish you like more and what packaging is less annoying to you if you're gonna pick between the two of these so far so this has this brush that's attached to it and i hate that i also hate that there's no mechanism to protect the brush when you put this down but like this is refillable but like it's all plastic so it's like is it greenwashing like what's the point of it is it really to be sustainable or is it to be more cost effective for us as consumers for the brand as a, like as a production thing i'm not really sure this is not refillable and it has some very annoying packaging and i think they're both very annoying packaging so it kind of comes down to what what would you prefer both are very beautiful products but in this like versus situation i'm more inclined to go with the dewdrop just because it's the one that i've been using the most i've been using this for a couple of years now and it is just my favorite foundation and i well i think this finish is beautiful and i could definitely see myself using this up and even like maybe buying another one and at some point i will put this on half of my face with the sublimage le temps and that might give you a better idea if like this is like a close finish and it's like you're not looking for the specific ingredients in the sublimage le temps this might be a more <laughs> this might be the more cost effective version of it and I say that very loosely because neither one of these products is inexpensive that i'm talking about Surat really kills it with their complexion products before we move on to powdering, I do want to put some blushes on. Now, this isn't going to be exactly the same, but these two products kind of remind me of each other. I have one of the Artistique liquid blushes in my hand, and I have it in the shade Barba Papa. And I, if you are new here, if you have just clicked on this video and none of my other Surat videos, they also sent me some of their powder blushes. And Barba Papa, which I lovingly call Barba Papa, is my favorite one. And you can even tell 
like look at it there's just like i've been i've been going in it like obviously it like takes a long time to use a powder product up but like i've been going into it and i loved the powder version so much so then i requested the liquid version and i like it it's not the exact same look and finish but i also love it as i've been wearing it i've been really enjoying it and it reminded me of a, a color that i already have in my collection a little bit for a couple of reasons. And that is Inner Glow from Cure Weiss. What the similar thing is, this is definitely more of a beige and Barba Papa is more of a pink, but they both have this silver-ish sheen that lays over top of them. So I'm just showing you that while the color isn't gonna be exactly the same, I feel like the vibe is similar enough that if I had both, I wouldn't need both. And I, I do have both. It's just like, if you're lusting after one of these things, Oftentimes, you already have something like that, especially when it comes to blushes. And I think this is one thing that many of us do, even subconsciously. But like, we like the same color blushes. And we do. And I actually only really find value whenever I'm trying a new blush formula to buy it in one of the shades that I like already kind of have a bunch of, because that's what I'm inclined to use. So a lot of times I'll buy an orange blush in a formula. Now, the revelation of me liking Barba Papa wouldn't have happened if Surratt never sent me these, because I have had this stronghold belief that I don't like pink makeup and that's just simply not true. I do like pink makeup and Barba Papa was really instrumental in changing my mind and I have really enjoyed this liquid formula. I'm gonna apply some on my Surratt side of my face. So you see how you're catching a little bit of a silver sheen but there's like a little bit of a pink underneath it. It reminds me of Inner Glow because of because of that silver sheen. Now in the powder version of Barba Papa is like a bl blue sheen that you get from it. it. This is not exactly the same finish, but they're both very beautiful. It feels like both the shades are like, they're sisters, but they're not twins. And I really kind of, I kind of like that I can be wearing Barba Papa and be able to use it in two different ways where this one is gonna go with a little bit more than the actual Barba Papa will go with. But let me put Inner Glow on the other cheek and show you why I feel like, I don't know, I get the, I get similar vibes from them. Again, this isn't gonna be the same color pink because this has like a beige, like a, it's like a beigey pink. You kind of get that same sheeny silver overlay that you're getting from Barba Papa, but with just a different base. I think they're both very, very pretty. And this is my opportunity to say if you have Inner Glow already, make sure you pull it out and play with it if you haven't touched in some time because it's really stunning. I love both of these blushes so much. They're both so good. Now it's time to powder. Okay, many of you said that this pulled very yellow on me in my last video whenever I tried it. This is the Surat Diaphene Loose Powder in Eclatant, which is their luminous powder. And they have a matte version, but the luminous one is a little bit yellow. And what I'm basically gonna do is put it up against my favorite powders and do my, my regular powder routine. So I use quite a few powders on my regular. So I use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Brightening Powder, the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder, and I also use the Charlotte Tilbury, just like the regular powder. This does leave a cast, which we learned in the last video. I didn't think it was as bad as like everyone else thought it was. I Maybe I'm blind, but also on camera, you know, things happen, things look different. I just like, it didn't look as crazy in real life. I am gonna use a brush to apply it today. Last time I used like a combination of the sponge and the brush. So I'm just gonna apply it with the brush lightly today and hopefully that will keep it from pulling too yellow. And I feel like this powder, I still need some time to get to know. It definitely does leave a little bit of a light cast. So buyer beware, especially if you're as fair as I am and a cast like this is going to, you know, really do something more than if you might be a little bit deeper than I am. To me, it doesn't make sense. If you're only going to release two translucent powders, why wouldn't they both be just translucent white? And I'm not saying that because I don't want people with deeper skin tones to have options, but it doesn't make sense that people with maybe deeper skin tones only have the option of a luminous finish powder. It's a confusing. It's confusing. Today it doesn't look that bad, but let me do my whole powder situation on the other side of my face. I obviously think that this side stayed more luminous. I think that if I were to compare it to one of the powders that I used, it's probably most similar to the pressed Charlotte Tilbury powder, which I know is pretty popular and a lot of people have tried before. All of the powders that I already used did a better job of perfecting and I feel like blurring 
than this side does. Like, so if you look at it, I just feel like you can still see a lot of my texture over here. Whereas on this side, you can't really see as much of the pores and the textures because I use like blurring powders. So this powder was like definitely like more of a thing that I wanted to explore to see if it was any good. Like maybe like a hidden gem because I've never heard anyone really talk about it. But yeah, I do think that the powder situation I already have is like very beautiful and I like it quite a bit. It's not going to be better than whatever powder you use because if you probably have a powder that you really, really like, I don't think that this one's going to top it. I don't think that that one's going to beat it. And while this is definitely like three products, but these are like three products that I ended up getting over time and then I was like, all of these together are really quite lovely. And so that's why I use them together. Next up, we are going to do some highlighting. I'm going to be using from Surratt the Torch Lumiere Diamante highlighter which is like a rose gold. I'm going to be pitting that up against a couple of things, kind of to just show you what I meant. So if you watched my Surratt first impressions video where I tried the second round of things that Surratt sent to me, this product really kind of perplexed me because it's not really like a lot of Surratt products that I have tried thus far. It is a highlighter stick, but it is, I don't want to say not elegant because like that's not what I mean. It's not the product that I thought it was going to be. When I think of brands like Surratt, when they do a highlighter stick, I'm going to, I thought immediately it was going to be like the Westman Atelier Let Up Highlight Stick. I also thought it might be like the Victoria Beckham Highlighter Stick, which those are more like balmy kind of highlights that have some shimmer in them. This has glitter in it, but like glitter in it. Whereas the West Natalie Highlight Stick has like very thin wash, like it's like very thin particles of sparkle and they're like almost undetectable when you put them on and you're really getting like more of a wet look when you apply that. But this is a highlighter for a person who likes highlighters. <laughs> it really is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swatch this on the back of my hand and just show you before we get into it. You can see that there are chunks of glitter in there. I had someone ask me in my last video how it would compare to the Alchemist. So yeah, this has chunks of glitter in it, but it is not like the Alchemist, which is a product by Ritual Defeat, which is different sizes of particles of shimmer in it. And it's like very, very silver. But when you see them next to each other, you can see that it's, this is more of a wet look. It has like a balmy base to it. But then also when you're looking at the chunks of the particles of mica in it, they're just like more varied and larger than even the Torch Lumiere. So then I also brought out, because I do have one of the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Sticks. This is the shade Nectar. So it has a bit of a peachy tinge to it. And I'm going to put that on my hand as well. So there is the Westman Atelier. And then when you blend this out, it just more becomes more of a balm with like a very light sheen. And the glitter particles aren't as detectable as they are in the Torch Lumiere. And then the Alchemist is on its own other level. And the West Metelier highlight stick, it doesn't feel like there's particles of glitter in it, where in the Alchemist and Torch Lumiere, you're getting like, you're gonna, you kind of kind of feel the particles of shimmer in them, whether they are like a glitter particles or mica or whatever they're using to make their shiny particles. Yeah, it's just like a whole different experience between the three. But because the Lit Up Highlight Stick is a little closer than the Alchemist, I'm gonna be putting that on the, the my side of my cheek. But I also wanted to show that person, that subscriber, that it's not really quite like the Alchemist at all. The Alchemist is a product that is like not for people who, with who are faint of heart when it comes to highlighter. But it's funny because I, I I kind of talked about this having chunks of glitter in it as like a negative thing, and I don't actually think that. I actually thought it looked really beautiful on the skin. It is a really elegant formula. It's just like unexpected whenever you think of all the things that Surratt does for it to have this like glitter particle situation. Like from where you are right now, it looks just really lovely. It's an elegant formula. It feels really nice, but it's just like, I feel like when we're talking about cream highlighters, you really have to know what you're getting into. And I just think that would be, it was surprising to me, but I have been enjoying wearing it because I do think it actually looks lovely on the skin. So I'm going to take the Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Stick. And because we already powdered, I'm just tapping these onto the skin. I have not tried dragging the one from Surratt on the skin, but I have done that with the Westman Atelier. And it glides on pretty okay, but I still, even if I haven't powdered, prefer tapping on. They're different things. 
I don't know if it's going to come across on camera. So this one's like definitely more of a highlighter highlighter. And this is definitely more of like a, a glow from within sort of situation. So you can see some of the shimmer particles. It's a consistent shimmer particle, which I think whenever we're talking about products with a shimmer in it, if, if, if it doesn't have that consistent shimmer in it, then that's where it really loses people. But it is consistent and it, you know, blends out really beautifully. And then the West Mentelier. So if you're more worried about like texture, I would say like something like the Westman Atelier is going to be better. Highlight is always going to emphasize texture. It's just like the nature of the, the, the beast. I think this is a more exciting, more adventurous highlight than what Westman Atelier is offering, which is like a more quote unquote mature kind of highlight where it's just like, oh yes, I want to do what the kids are doing and I want to highlight, but I don't want to be just like the kids. I need it to be different, like more for my skin. And that's not saying that anyone of any age can't enjoy a very sparkly highlighter. I'm not telling you what is and is wrong and is right. There are no rules to make up. This just feels a little bit inconsistent with what Surat does, which is like just the most interesting part about it to me. I don't have any bronzers from Surat, so I'm just not gonna apply any bronzers today. And then we're gonna go on to eyeliner. And then just for transparency's sake, I am setting that with the Pat McGrath setting powder. So from Surat, I'll be using the Smoky Eye Baton. I have continued to really enjoy exploring this since I tried it for the first time. And I'm going to be putting that up against the Victoria Beckham Satin Kajol Eyeliner in the shade Coco. This shade is Fumé Brune, so they're both like a, a cocoa deep brown. I think this is a little bit lighter than this is, and this does not have all of the components that this does. But if you're unfamiliar with the Smoky Eye Baton, what it does is it has an eyeliner on one end and then on the other end it has this applicator it has like eyeshadow powder in it it's pretty interesting to mess with i'm comparing it to the victoria beckham satin eye kajal because they kind of give me a similar result so the victoria beckham eyeliners are designed to smudge they give you the time to smudge and then when they set they set very beautifully and i really like it and it was the first eyeliner I ever really fell in love with and I felt like I could like adapt and, and really do kind of like smoky liner. Beforehand I feel like all the eyeliners I used didn't like allow me to do that. Let me put on the smoky eye baton and I'm not talented enough to talk while I'm putting on eyeliner so I'll come back at you whenever that's all said and done. I got really carried away and I started applying this to the other eye. I really got lost in the sauce there for a second. Hold on, I am gonna take a, a, a little bit of a brush and just buff this out a little bit more. I'm really glad I didn't start doing a wing on this side. Here's the smoky eye if it's on, on one eye. I also tight lined with it. The only interesting thing about it is that every time I do this on camera, I feel like in my footage, it looks inconsistent and patchy but in real life it doesn't. So I do think there is a sheen to it because I think that's like light hitting off of it because I always like the way it looks in person and then I'm like on camera, I'm like, I don't know that I like it as much on camera as I do in person. That's the just the truth. Like the truth of the matter is, yeah, it looks, you know, consistent and even. And then on camera, it's like, it doesn't look like that at all. But let me apply the satin kajal to the other eye and I'm gonna put it in the waterline. I already started, tight lining. My bad. <laughs> there they both are. I feel like Fumé Brune is definitely a darker brown, definitely like a, a blackened brown, whereas Coco maintains its like, it's actually brown. It's not as deep as uh, Fumé Brune. Just using the Satin Kajal liner, I could have you know, absolutely pulled out an eyeshadow and buffed that onto it, which is like something that I could easily do. I have plenty of brown eyeshadows that I could do that with. So far, I have been really enjoying playing with the Smoky Eye Baton, and I do think it's like an interesting thing, but it's not something that I need the Smoky Eye Baton to achieve. So if you want to play around with the concept of that, just take one of your eyeliners and then also take a powder eyeshadow that's very similar and just like buff out that eyeliner with that eyeshadow because that's essentially what's happening. <laughs> but I think they're very cool. I, I, I think I like both of these products very much. And I, you know, I 
ultimately I like them both and I could see a place for both of them in my makeup collection, right? Like simultaneously. But I don't think that the Smoky Eye Baton feels like anything that anyone needs to run out and buy unless you're like in the mood to like try something that feels unique and interesting. But I have got received comments about the longevity of this and I haven't personally experienced that, but I also haven't worn it like all day yet. So I'll report back to you as that, as I keep testing it. I think it's time to move on to mascara. I have the Releve Mascara in the shade Noir. And this is a tubing mascara with fibers in it. And I only ever really have one mascara open at any given time. And the YSL Lash Clash is my favorite mascara. It is not a tubing mascara, but we'll just see what they look like next to each other on top of a little bit of eyeliner. Let me zoom you in, show you how that goes on. And now we'll do the Lash Clash. I mean, their brushes are even like completely different. I want to also say that I'm using my left hand to apply the, the Lash Clash. It's not normally that messy, but I'm trying to get better at applying it with my left hand. So me getting it all over my eye right now is not 100% the mascara's fault. Well, but let me wait for that to dry and I will flick that off and then we will talk about both mascaras and compare them. So on the left hand side we have the Lash Clash and then we, on this side we have the Releve. The Lash Clash is like much more um, dramatic and if I'm gonna bother with a mascara like I don't want to wear false lashes so I like my mascara to kind of not really give you 100% the illusion of false lashes but I like a more dramatic lash. I think it was flaking off my eyes the, the other day because like all down here I had like a black shadow and I was like I don't know what that was. It might have been the smoky eye baton. Jury's out on that and that might have been what was in my waterline falling out but I'm still playing around with these so I don't know them inside and out. I don't know that you need to go to Surat for your mascara experience. In my opinion, like I don't think that's something that like one needs to do. I also know that Mascara is maybe the one thing that even less people are, are willing to spend a luxury amount of money on. Like a lot of people, that's where like they draw the line. So it's like, you're probably like, I wouldn't buy the YSL one either. And that's fair enough. <laughs> that's fair enough. That's like, it's that price point isn't for everyone. Uh, because, you know, mascara is one of those high turnover products. Every three to six months, I do every three months, depending on the formula, make sure you're checking. But like, you need to like, switch these products out a bit. And that's why people don't often want to spend the luxury price point on them. Okay, so for the last thing, we're going to talk about the lips. So I have the Lip Sleek in the shade Heaven. And when I was like thinking of the formulas that I have in my collection, I didn't really have too much like it. But the thing that I have that is closest, and it's in formula only, not so much the color, is Victoria Beckham's Posh Lipstick. <laughs> Sorry, Posh Lipstick. And I have the shade Spice, which is like not at all the same thing. But these are both really high gloss products and uh, so they give off like that, that luminosity. I needed it to go up against something that was like kind of a shiny. I don't have a lot of super shiny. I have mostly like satin lipsticks, I would say, if not matte, but they both are in these bullets that like are designed to make sure you're not crushing the lip product because they're very soft. So let me apply the lip slick. So the thing about Heaven is that it's essentially my lip color. It kind of just looks like I put a little bit of clear gloss on. But let me also put on the, before we move on from it, just make sure if you do purchase this, you're only clicking it up enough as, as what you need because you cannot click it back down. Here they both are on my lips. Here's what I'll say. The formulas aren't very similar. Uh, the finishes are more similar than if I tried one of my other lipsticks with it. The Posh lipstick feels a little bit heavier on my lip than the Lip Sleek. The Lip Sleek feels really light, but it also feels like the kind of lip product that might move around on my lips, where it feels like the Victoria Beckham would stay put a little bit more. That might just be the way that they feel. I, I, I have applied the Lip Sleek a couple of times, but it's kind of hard for me to figure out whenever it starts wearing off because... It just looks like my lip color, so it's like a perfect shade for me. Like, uh, like you know, anyone who's looking for that my lips but let better. If you have the same lip color as me, then Heaven 
might be a good option for you. But I do really like the lips like formula, but it doesn't feel so unique that you need to turn to Surratt for something like this. And I'm sure if you already like the finish of something like this, you probably have them in your collection. In fact, I don't know if the other video is going up before this one. I need to figure, I haven't figured that out yet. It's, it's a chaotic week for me. But I also have these About Face lip color butters, but these are my these are in my testing drawer so I don't really know these products that well so like the Surratt stuff is also in my to test and review drawer these give a very similar finish to the lip slicks as well I would also say that if you go this route just know that these are really scented whereas the Surratt one isn't it might have fragrance in it but it's not as potent as in these about face ones if this video is going up first I'm going to start working on an about face video you have to give me some time for that with all the stuff going on in my life and I still have to do a Surratt review and I also am working on a secret brand review and I have some other stuff I need to review okay so we will have to review but we still gotta love up on what we have anyway here are the two sides of my face Surratt and Surratt not all Surratt because <laughs> you know we have the Surratt foundation on over here too they're both beautiful sides of makeup and while they're not exactly the same they have the same vibe. And so I hope I proved to you over the course of this, if you were lusting after any of these Surratt products, but maybe it's not in your means right now to buy a Surratt product, or maybe you're on a low buy or a no buy. Hopefully in today's video, I was able to help you curb that feeling that you need to break your budget or break your low buy for a Surratt product by showing you that maybe what's in your collection is just as good. And that's also to say, as I show you these other products that are already in my makeup collection, these were already in my makeup collection. I wasn't trying to tell you that you need to go run out and buy these because they might have been better in the Surat, than the Surat, in my opinion, in today's application. The whole point is to be like, oh, I have brown eyeliner and I can smudge it out, right? Like, you know, that's the whole point of these videos. It's like, it's just to break the illusion that new is automatically better or the thing that I don't have is automatically better. The, ch the chances are that is not true. I am coming back to the Surratt Dew Drop Foundation because it is my favorite. And I haven't had a foundation knock it out. And there might be a day where the Surratt Dew Drop Foundation is no longer my favorite foundation. I can rely on it till then. And I don't look at other foundations longingly think that they're gonna knock it out of the top spot. If you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. That will help me get out to more people who might be looking for this kind of content. And again, I'm on patreon.com if you would like to support me there. Thank you to all my current patrons. And as a reminder, there is no pressure to subscribe to my Patreon. It's just extracurricular if you want to do it. And I also have merch if you'd like to buy the merch. Anyway, I appreciate you all so much for watching. Remember to follow your hoat. And you will find me. Bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>